and initial investigations seem to indicate that Pakistan based terrorist groups may be responsible for the Ludhiana court blast. Forensic report is awaited on the nature of explosives that have been used. A team of National Security Guard commandos, the National Bomb Data Center is at Ludhiana court blast site. Even as we speak, the situation in Punjab is tense. There is a red alert across the state. There is an apprehension that hostile elements across the border could try and form in trouble ahead of elections. The aim appears to be to revive terrorism in Punjab and Khalistani terrorist organizations, according to initial investigations, may have a role to play in the Ludhiana court blast. Of course, the investigation will be handled by the National Investigation Agency. All terror investigations are handled uh, by the NIA. Punjab police, of course, cordoned off that entire area. One person was killed, five others were injured. It is still not clear whether the person killed planted the explosive, was rigging together explosive or was a victim. A powerful blast rocked the Ludhiana district and sessions court this afternoon. One person was killed, five injured. Police prime office, I believe, the bomber was killed either trying to rig together the IED or detonate the explosives. The National Investigation Agency, the National Bomb Data Center of the National Security Guard and forensic teams are on ground collecting samples. But the blast in the run-up to assembly elections in Punjab, sharing a border with Pakistan, has security forces now on red alert. A powerful blast rocking Ludhiana's district and sessions court complex. Inside the bathroom on the second floor at around 12.22 p.m. when the court complex was teeming with lawyers, litigants, police and judges. Bringing down the walls and shattering the windows of the washroom leaving victims in a pool of blood and with grievous injuries. The blast hit the high security zone which enjoins the district commissioner's office in Punjab's biggest city. <laughs> Chief Minister Charanjit Singh Channi, who rushed to the spot, dropped a bombshell immediately linking the blast to the elections and blaming anti-national forces. The center was quick to rope in the National Investigation Agency, stationed in Chandigarh to rush to the spot. Teams of the National Security Guard and National Bomb Data Center are also assisting in the probe. The blast comes close on the heels of the sacrilege-linked murders that led to security alerts in the pole-bound state of Punjab. With Manjeet Segal and Kamaljeet Sandhu, Bureau Report, India Today. Political name-calling has escalated after the blast. First the sacrilege, then the lynchings, and now the blast has the Charanjit Singh Channi government in the line of opposition fire. Even as investigators look for clues to probe the terror angle, political blame game has escalated. Kamaljeet Kaur Sandhu, Anna Punjab Bureau, get us more. Punjab's poll season just got bloodier with a blast at Ludhiana's district and Sessions Court complex. Take political agenda. 
लोगों में डर फैलाया जा रहा है कहना चाहना है कि सरकार बिल्कुल फेल है जिन्ने देर रहूगी उन्ने देर पंजाब उन्ने दिन पंजाब का नुकसान होगा द मोटिव ऑफ द ब्लास्ट इज स्टिल अंडर इन्वेस्टिगेशन बट एन ऑल आउट पोलिटिकल वॉर हैज एस्कलेटेड पंजाब चीफ मिनिस्टर चरणजीत सिंह चन्नी पिन द ब्लेम on anti national elements smelling a conspiracy to create tension in the poll bound state sanu lagda hai ke aun waliyan chonan nu dekh ke arajikta phalaun di punjab de vich koshish hai is de piche kehdi agencies hain ya koi da gang hai ya kya hai ohde bare tehqiqat chal rahi hai badi chheti assi kise natije te pahunch jaavange punjab congress chief navjot singh siddhu sang the same tune mujhe bahut dukh hai sir 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 external interference in the state apni jehdi state ya e border state ya ye vi rule out nahi kita ja sakta ke jo jehdi koi bar di forces ne unna da vi e kara ho sakta kyunki oh kadi nahi chahunde ke punjab jehda stable rahe aur e punjab stable hunda te pura hindustan stable hai is unstable karan di koshishan kitiyan jaan gi this gave ammunition to the bjp which pointed out to navjot singh siddhu's ties with pakistan especially pakistan's prime minister imran khan meri nivedan hai jo log aaj bhi ye sochte hain ki imran khan mera yaar hai aur bajwa hamara dost hai punjab ki suraksha agency ko sark rehna padega us aur dost nahi shatru hai jo tiffin bomb bhejta hai jo hathiyar bhejta hai jo punjab ke mahol ko kharab karna chahta hai bhai bhai ko ladana chahta hai with elections just a couple of months away the ludhiana court blast gave the opposition led by captain amrinder singh a stick to beat the channi government with e to maadi gall ki hai ki ithe kanun di vasta nahi police jehda kam police da us kam to hata ke siyasi vendetta taraf lagge hai to main dgp nu kehna chahna hai ki dgp da kam aa nahi hai कि जो सियासी बेंडेटा करे उन्होंने काम है लॉ एंड ऑर्डर मेंटेन करना जेड़ा काम आ नहीं कर रहे मैं स्ट्रांगली कंडेम करता है तो कहना चाहना है कि सरकार बिल्कुल फेल है जिन्ने देर रहूगी उन्ने देर पंजाब उन्ने दिन पंजाब का नुकसान होगा ये सारी एक कंस्पिरेसी के तहत एक साजिश के तहत पंजाब के माहौल को बिगाड़ने की कोशिश करी जा रही है चन्नी सरकार लॉ एंड ऑर्डर के मामले में कानून व्यवस्था बनाए रखने के मामले में पूरी तरीके से फेल हो गई कमिंग ऑन द बैक ऑफ टेंशन ओवर अलेज सैक्रिलेज इंसिडेंट्स द ब्लास्ट एट द लुधियाना कोर्ट फ्यूल फियर्स ऑफ मोर वायलेंस इन द स्टेट द पॉलिटिकल ब्लेम गेम हैज ओनली एडेड फ्यूल टू फायर विद ललित शर्मा इन लुधियाना ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे and joining me now on india first is manish tiwari congress party member of parliament from shri anandpur sahib and former information and broadcasting minister manish tiwari what do you make of this blast at the ludhiana court premises and chief minister charanjit singh channi saying that the probe will unravel which agencies are out to scare a section of voters and seek votes well uh, it's extremely unfortunate uh, what's happened in ludhiana today uh it was my former constituency you know i represented that uh, a particular place uh, for over 5 years and uh, i have been to that court complex a number of times and as you are aware gorov you cover strategic affairs you have written and commented about it extend so you know punjab has been at the receiving end of the depredations of our western neighbor pakistan now going back almost to 1975 and uh, when pakistan decided to unroll the strategy of bleeding india with a thousand cuts punjab was the first frontier it suffered between 1980 and 1995 
And so therefore, the peace of Punjab is extremely important uh, for the people of Punjab. The stability of Punjab is paramount in the minds of the people of Punjab. And uh, therefore, under those circumstances, I don't think it is appropriate to prejudge an issue, let the investigation play itself out in entirety, and those responsible uh, should be brought to justice. But suffice to say that uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a border state, yes. if there are repeated incidents which tend to disturb uh, the peace of the state, which tend to upset the intricate balance which has been maintained going back now to 1995, it is extremely worrisome. It indeed is. But do you see a link, sir, between the blast, the sacrilege at the Harmandar Sahib and the lynchings, uh, both in Amritsar and in Kapoorthala, sir? <clears throat> well, as I said that uh, in, a, in, in a border state, uh, you cannot really ever discount anything. And the fact is that uh, after the victory of the deep state of Pakistan in Afghanistan, you know, they are on a different level of hubris. And their strategy of uh, trying to disrupt peace in Punjab, in Jammu and Kashmir, uh, ebbs and flows depending upon how strong they feel at a particular point in time. And... Uh, there is absolutely no doubt about the fact that since the 15th of August 2021, the Pakistani deep state, which is the ISI military combined, are on a different level of hubris. So therefore, under those circumstances, there is a need to be extremely vigilant. There has to be cooperation between the central government and the state government. There has to be cooperation between the state police and the border security force because... Uh, if these incidents, unfortunately, become the uh, template going uh, into the next couple of months, it will have very, very deep and profound implications on the psyche of the people. And the BJP has hit out uh, at Navjot Singh Sidhu's Yar Dildar across the border, saying that this Yar Dildar is no friend of India. Uh, the BJP alleges that Navjot Sidhu's proximity to Pakistani leadership may have an adverse impact on the working of security agencies in a very crucial border state. Sir, your appreciation of this criticism? Well, I do not want to really comment on uh, what the Bharatiya Janata Party has to say about a particular individual. I think uh, he is a better place to be able to articulate his own position. Suffice to say, I have always maintained that uh, there will never be peace with Pakistan till the time they are not able to surmount the institutional humiliation which the Pakistani army suffered in 1971 with the dismemberment of Pakistan and the creation of Bangladesh. Uh, that's, uh, that's something which they have been belaboring under uh, going back almost five decades. So, therefore, if anybody thinks that uh, by improving uh, trade ties or by improving cultural ties or people-to-people -people, uh, contacts, uh, things with Pakistan would uh, resolve themselves, I'm afraid uh, that is a very, very simplistic view of the situation. It is not going to happen till that point in time. The Pakistani deep state does not really reconcile to the fact that the uh, snakes that they have nurtured yes. now going back almost four decades, which have also caused immense amount of harm in Pakistan is a strategy, is a zero-sum game, which is not going to bring any tangible results till the time that whole infrastructure of terror, which they have spawned, nurtured and assiduously cultivated and used against India yes. uh, over a period of time, Till the time they are not able to either get a handle on it, uh, they are not able to roll it back, or uh, they are not able to neuter it. Uh, unfortunately, this situation, especially in our border states, would continue to be a cause of concern for the security agencies. And do you see a systematic effort to take Punjab back to those dark days of terror? You've seen that firsthand, sir. Well, as someone who cut his teeth on the trench lines of the political battle 
against extremism and separatism in Punjab in the 80s and 90s as someone who has personally suffered the depredations of terror, I shudder to think that uh, the state which I represent in parliament would actually uh, go back to those uh, very, very dark days. But knowing the sinister designs of Pakistan, uh, I really cannot uh, put it past them. And as they say, that eternal vigil is the price of liberty. And in the case of Punjab, eternal vigil is the price that we have to pay in order to maintain the peace of the state. And as I earlier said, this is an issue which is above parties in politics because the stability, security, peace of a border state involves us all. And therefore, there is a need for all hands to be on, on, on the deck. Central government, state government, the border security forces, the intelligence agencies. I've written about this extensively yes. in my book, 10 Flashpoints, 20 Years, National Security Situations that have impacted India. And uh, I do believe anyone who tries to play partisan politics or who tries to prejudge the outcome of an investigation is actually doing the greatest disservice to India. Sir, you're absolutely right on Pakistan state-sponsored terror. But in your appreciation, are there elements within our country who are taking Pakistan's agenda forward? And in your appreciation, is the state and the center, are they doing enough to neutralize such elements? Well, uh, of course, uh, there are agent provocators uh, in India. Uh, there are people both underground and overground who unfortunately uh, work either, uh, uh, either uh, I wouldn't even say innocently, but uh, uh, possibly uh, without really thinking through the implications of what uh, their stances really bring to bear on the security and stability of the state. And of course, as uh, you are aware, that there is a fringe uh, in Pakistan and there is more than a fringe in Jammu and Kashmir, uh, which actively collaborates with these nefarious and insidious agendas. So the sacrilege, the lynchings, the blast, aren't these signs of collapse of law and order in Punjab? Well, it's extremely worrisome. I would not, uh, Gaurav, characterize it as a collapse of law and order, but it is extremely worrisome. It is a matter of concern. And uh, if there is a common thread which uh, runs through all these inc incidents, then it calls for a very, very uh, profound and uh, deep investigation in order to neuter this conspiracy. And therefore, there comes a time when the security of the nation is involved when all of us, irrespective of whether we are heading into polls or not, need to rise above whatever our electoral considerations may be and look at the big picture. And the big picture is that we have China, which has transgressed into eastern Ladakh, which is building uh, villages in Arunachal Pradesh. The China-Pakistan linkage is uh, very, very well established. The relationship between the PLA and the Pakistan army. And of course, then you have Pakistan's own strategy of leading India with a thousand cuts. You know, the, the, the uh, terror groups from the Jaish e Mohammed to the Lashkar e Taiba uh, and various others which they have spawned. And thus it becomes extremely imperative that we must be very responsible in our utterances, in our articulation uh, when it comes to these issues. You know, uh, anyone taking pot shots at the other really plays into the hands of those people whose only one intent is to subvert the unity and integrity of India, to disrupt the peace of India. And uh, thus, uh, we need to uh, be extremely vigilant and circumspect that any utterance that we make does not add to the specter of instability. It does not uh, make the situation all the more... Uh, um, critical or uh, it does not uh, ignite uh, more more passions. Okay. There is a need to give confidence to the people and most importantly all politicians need to be extremely restrained and a professional investigation needs to play itself out 
to get to the bottom of all this because if the peace of Punjab is, is disrupted, it is not only the Punjabis who will suffer. Ultimately, the nation has to pay the cost for it. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, you've seen that through the 80s and the 90s. You cut your political teeth, as you said, uh, through that era. But is it your apprehension and is that your considered opinion that Punjab is heading in that direction or elements are trying to take Punjab back to those days? Well, I would not go so far to say that Punjab is actually headed in that direction. But as I earlier pointed out, the peace in Punjab is extremely delicate. It is extremely fragile. Uh, all it requires is one uh, incident to be able to, to psychologically put people back into the days from 1980 to 1995. And therefore, if there is one thing which every Punjabi is, is invested in, and invested in emotionally, psychologically, uh, economically, politically, is to ensure that no one and no one uh, should be allowed uh, to disrupt this fragile peace which has been holding the field despite the depredations of Pakistan since 1995. Absolutely. Manish Tiwari, for the moment, many thanks for joining me here on India First. Thank you, Gaurav, for having me. And I do hope that we are able to get to the bottom of it and absolutely expose the sinister conspiracy and neuter those elements who are responsible for these ghastly incidents which unfortunately have been taking place in my state of Punjab. You're right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. A spark neglected burns the house. It is extremely important for security agencies to catch the perpetrators of terror and ensure that this fire does not singe Punjab like it did in the 1980s and early 1990s. That is all I have for you on India First this evening. Coming up next is Udyan Mukherjee. He answers all your stock-related queries on the other side of a quick break on Business Today.